So simplifying a complex fraction. Just a couple of examples here quickly, and then we're going to talk about what this means. Start with this one. It says 2 over x plus 2 all over 1 over x plus 2 plus 2 over x. So this is a bit of a mess. I want to remind you of something that a complex fraction takes this form. It's AB over CD. And to solve a complex fraction, you take AB times the reciprocal of this, so times, where we had D at the bottom, C at the top. We're going to let them switch places to be D times C. Why is that true? Well, what if you had one half? One half, and you divided that by quarters, right? That would be two, wouldn't it? <clears throat> well, look at it this way. Here's your one half right here, so one half times not one fourth, but bring it up as it's reciprocal, and you over one. And isn't four divided by two equal to two? So just as you know, something to think about here: how that really works. Um, okay. So, all right, here we go. So let's move on, please. Let's work on this. We have to have a little bit of a strategy. If we're trying to build this fraction AB over CD, we really have the AB part is done, don't we? Down here, the fraction is not put together, so we need to find the least common denominator here. I know people see this x here, and they say, oh, this has a factor of x here. And then they see this x over here, and they say, oh, here's another factor of x. But on this side here, this is not a factor of x. This is an add-in of x. The factor here is x plus 2, right? So just to kind of be clear about that, so what you're going to do here is this. On this side, you're going to multiply by 1 using x plus 2 over x plus 2. And on this side, this is where you're going to use that little x, right? Because we're missing a factor of x over here. So we have x here and x here, right? So if we look for a second, we have x times x plus 2 here. On this side, we have x plus x plus 2. So we do have a common denominator. Just be a little bit careful here. A lot of people also are very, very tempted to go ahead and multiply in. I don't usually do that till the very end because I'm, I think that um, the author of the question may have left us some ways to simplify. Plus, see this x plus 2 here? I'm thinking about this one up here. And maybe when this thing comes up as it's reciprocal, remember we're going to do this loop de bit over here. When that thing comes up, we might get a chance to get rid of it. So I'm not going to do anything with that, but I'm going to do the x times the 1 here. And then remember, it's 2 times x plus 2, so it's 2 times this and that, right? So x times 1 is this x right here. You know what? Let me I guess I've got to be a little bit careful here. I'm just going to rewrite the top portion. So here's the 2 over x plus 2 here, right? Just to be clear, this fraction bar right here, the solidus, Mr. Cage, uh, is this, this solidus right here, right? So now I'm going to do my simplification here and do this. x times 1 is x here, right? This plus sign right here, you guys, is this plus sign right here. 2 times x is 2x. 2 times 2 is 4, right? And then these denominators are common, so we don't add denominators, right? We just make sure that they're common denominators, and it is. So we have x times x plus 2, don't we? All right. Now we have the form that we are looking for, and the form we are looking for, just to remind you, is a, b over c, d. And that's the form we have. That's the form we have. So I'm going to rewrite this thing. Now I'm going to start to simplify this all the way out. First I have to get it in complex fraction form, and I have. So here's the numerator times the reciprocal of the denominator, right? So this thing is, this denominator becomes the new numerator, so it's x times x plus 2. Anybody see how that's going to cancel out right there? It's pretty good, right? And at the bottom it's x plus, it's x plus 2, x plus 4, isn't it? So denominator becomes numerator, numerator becomes denominator, right? Okay. <clears throat> and look how this cancels here. Hopefully you can see this. Here's a factor of x plus 2 here, and we're cross canceling across the multiplication sign, and this is the same factor here. So this over itself is 1, so this is 1 here, and this is 1 here, isn't it? So if we multiply that, we would get 2x over, and 1 times this mess here is x plus 2x plus 4. I've seen people say, hey, I got a 2x here and I have a 2x here. Can we cancel? 
no this is a factor up here these are add-ins down there so be very very careful about that we can only cross out factors right not add-ins so we have to be careful all right do we want to do one more sure want to do one more Willow, what do you think one more Willow says one more so here we go here we have this one it says x over five plus four this one's a mess x plus five like this and then at the bottom it's eight plus 1 over x. So neither the top nor the bottom is in the form of a complex fraction. So I'm going to try to get them in that form right now. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remember that this is that, isn't it? 4 is the same as 4 over 1. And I, we, have a, we have a denominator of 5 here. We have a denominator of 1 here. So what I can easily fix that. I'm going to multiply just this piece by 1, right? I can multiply anything, even in parts, by 1 because it doesn't change anything. And then if I look over here, this has a denominator of 1, and this has a denominator of x, so I'm going to multiply this by, right? I want this to be this denominator, so 1 times what is x is x, isn't it? But I can't do that. It has to be x over x, because x over x is 1. So I'm kind of getting ahead a little bit. 1 times 5 is 5, so we will have a common denominator. 4 times 5 is 20, so we have x plus 20 over 5. Look, we still have the 4 over 5, uh, the 4 over 1, because 20 over 5 is 4, right? And the x divided by 5 is right here. x divided by 5. It's all still there, isn't it? All right, now we're going to work from underneath. We have x times 8 is 8x, isn't it? This plus sign right here is this plus sign. And this one is this one. All over x. I want to show you again, that 8 didn't go away. We have 8x over x is still 8. We didn't lose the 1 over x because 1 over x is right there, isn't it? So now we have this thing in the form of a complex fraction, right? Remember, A over B over C over D. And remember, what we're going to do is we're going to bring this bottom part up as it's reciprocal. So we're going to leave this just in the form it was in, x plus 20 over 5, right, times this thing is going to get flipped here, right? So this x down here at the bottom is now up here, and the 8x plus 1 is here, 8x. And when we multiply this, I don't see any reason to combine these things, but I'm gonna, so I'm just gonna multiply it by rewriting it and just say this is the same as x times x plus 20. And down here is the same as five times eight x plus one. And there's our final solution. Wow, that was really good, right? Um, again, I have to promise you and remind you that the more you do this, the better you get at it. I know that it's a little bit frustrating at first, but if you don't give up and if you just keep working on it, uh, again, write me your comments, tell me uh, what's good and what confused you, and I'll do my best to address your concerns. Keep it up, keep studying, study, study, study. Right, Willow? She said, mm-hmm.